impact, especially along the beaches here uh, in the tourism industry, uh, to the state of Florida and to local governments, lost bed tax revenues and other revenues. Uh, following the uh, following the blowout, BP did set aside twenty billion dollars to pay uh, claims. Uh, if you recall, after that, they set up the Gulf Coast Claims Facility. It was administered by Ken Feinberg. They set up offices across uh, the Gulf Coast. They paid out some monies. But uh, after a while, the federal court consolidated a lot of the, a lot of the lawsuits, a lot of the claims. Uh, Judge Barbier, uh, I guess the Eastern, Eastern District of Louisiana, uh, federal court judge is has done a very good job of trying to to address the largest environmental disaster in our country's history and one of the largest, if not the largest, uh, economic disasters in our history. Remember the, the impact of the Gulf of Mexico, we have one of the largest economies in the entire world if you can be separated from, from the United States. Yeah. But what I've been worried about, and I know talking with a lot of you, is you know, some of the large business claims have been paid, but we have so many small businesses here along the Gulf Coast. The mom and pop restaurants, the the folks doing tours, fishing, people in uh, a lot of the attractions are here today, the, the airport. Many of these claims, uh, it's been, especially for small, small businesses that don't have their own accounts, it's been very difficult for them to get their paperwork together to take time out of just uh, keeping the business alive uh, to organize a claim. So um, I was very heartened when Pat Juno came to see me in Washington a few months ago. He now has been appointed by Judge Barbier to uh, administer the new Deepwater Horizons Claim Center. This is the follow-on to what Ken Feinberg used to do and the Gulf Coast Claims Facility, but it is court administered. Uh, and I'm very heartened because Pat Juno is a real expert in getting these large uh, economic damage uh, cases uh, worked out and dispensed with. I found him to be very open and encouraging, and he is from Louisiana and understands how important small businesses are to the lifeblood of our communities and our neighborhoods and put together all of the, the Gulf Coast. Um, he's really just gotten underway this summer, but I anticipate what he's going to update, the information he's going to provide us today will demonstrate uh, that they are, uh, we've turned a page now. Folks that had trouble with the Gulf Coast Claims Facility now are being heard and I think that's that's very important. They're, this is a little bit different from what's happening in seafood, so I hope you can explain that, Pat. And also, uh, government claims will be treated and are being treated a little bit differently. So I hope we can clarify that. But I'm I'm very appreciative that you are here to speak directly to to many of the leading uh, business um, businesses and tourist attractions, and a lot of these folks represent a lot of other people along. The Gulf Coast, who really need your advice. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Uh, <coughs> Kathy was correct that I've never met her in my life before when I was in Washington here recently. I thought it was appropriate to uh, set the stage from a congressional standpoint as well as a state standpoint what my role was, what we we're going to be doing. I really want to stay at a brief all the contracts of the five respective states. I've done the same thing with the state government uh, of what this process was. And in simple terms, you know, uh, I'm from Louisiana. Uh, I've worked as a kid in most of the industries y'all were talking about. I grew up on the coast. And I'm, I know what it is. I get it. I understand. Uh, I'm, but I'm one of those kind of uh, people that, that I want people to know what the situation is, what the facts are, what their rights are. It's America, whatever decision you make to file a, file a claim or not to make claim, I don't, that's not my role. But I want people to know what's there. So that's what precipitated my meeting when I met. And uh, we, we 
talked a good while in her office with her staff. And some people get it, some people don't get it. She gets it. <laughs> she, it I think it was about six minutes into our discussion. Uh, her her uh, uh, questions were very direct and very straightforward to me. She said, Are you telling me that this is appropriate? And I have She said, I understand that. And we have, you're telling me these are eligible. There is a large degree of eligible claims in the community uh, that she represents. And I said, yes, I'm telling you that. And you have a system in place to address those claims. That she said, I get it. Would you come down here and talk to people down here and inform people what they're right? But that's what I call getting. Some people don't get it. And that's why I'm here. I would have not. I would have not come. I don't go unless somebody tells me, asks me. Uh, to do that because it's, it's not about, we got a, I got enough to do on the other side of the plate. But I think that's important and, and you to be commended for that because uh, you're obviously attuned to what goes on in your local. Let, let me kind of step, set the stage for you. Uh, what, what went on before, what's happening now, and I'm going to give you exact specific details as recently as of this morning. That's when I was, you saw me downstairs writing these notes down I was on the phone. When this whole thing started, uh, they created uh, uh, through uh, meetings, etc. I'm not a participant in any of that. They created a system to address claims that came out of the uh, Austin. And I might add, I'm acutely aware of this. This is the biggest, single, most complex uh, disaster with five years to five different uh, jurisdictions, the federal government, uh, natural resources, everything's involved in the history of the United States. There's never been anything like this uh, uh, that's ever occurred. I get calls today from Japan, Norway, Australia. They're all looking at this process that's going on today. And the reason they're doing that is because it's, it, can, it can set a model, if you will, but what happens for other countries if unfortunately if something like this happens? So they're looking. They're looking for the barometer. They're looking for the test. So I'm acutely aware of the historic uh, uh, impact this can have. Uh, and I kind of, I've told every, uh, by the way, I've visited all the claims so that you, uh, there's one uh, sites here in Naples and in Clearwater. And I told every employee that it's kind of like a book. Uh, you have an introduction, you have several chapters. And, yeah, the last chapter kind of tells you whether how things went. Was, you know, was it a good marriage? Was it a bad marriage? Was it a good business? Was it a bad business? And there's going to be a last chapter written about this. And I said, you know, uh, with my span in life, I sure would like that last chapter to read pretty good. Uh, and it can read bad. It can read somewhere in between. And I told every employee who works in this massive project that they are writing a part of the chapter. We, we tied it to hip, we got to do this thing, we got to do it right, we got to do it consistent, and so forth. The point I'm making is I'm acutely aware of the magnitude of what we're talking about. So what brought us here? They formed the Gulf Coast Claim Facility, uh, they formed this trust with different funding mechanisms, um, uh, and it wasn't funded all in one time. The $20 billion trust was not funded, $20 billion. It was a commitment to the bill of the 20 million. Well, they started the elaborate process under the OPA, or the Pollution Act, and then from payments and things of that nature. And you know the rest of the story as it unfolded uh, as far as all these communities. The big problem was, the big problem was, was people knowing, from my perspective, was knowing what the rules were. You know, I mean, what, what's the guideline? If I got this kind of case, I have this kind of case, I have this kind of case. What are the rules of the road to determine how I'm going to treat? Well, therein lies the big difference between what's well, two big differences, what we're dealing with in the past and today. The, the protocol, if you will, for the Gulf Coast Claim Facility, I mean, you could put it in an insert of a, a Sunday magazine, the, the, the small section. And it was, there was a lot of subjectivity in that, uh, in, in determining what the rules and uh, regulations were, and eligibilities and things of that nature. This one is, it, it 
almost looks like a uh, War and Peace, uh, the novel. It's about that big. It's all built in in advance. And the object was that it had people identically situated, had the same kind of claim, ought to be treated the same. That's kind of what the concept was. And try to take away the subjectivity and make it objective. Let's, let's get standing and then clearly tell, delineate what what the rules were for qualifications and the process. Now, <coughs> with that being said and done, it, it's critical everybody. I am not, was not, the architect of the settlement group. I'm after the fact. What happened after about eight or nine months of this negotiation, they arrived at this settlement agreement, which is an agreement I told you about. That then went to the court to get preliminary approval. Uh, Judge Barbie granted preliminary approval. Uh, he appointed me to be the administrator and the subset role of that, uh, to be in charge of, of that program to implement, to make sure that that program is efficiently, promptly, and uniformly uh, administered through this whole program. One added piece of the puzzle, when they had the, the original trust, you know, the $20 billion trust, that's being, it's being dissolved. You now have two trusts. It's the economic and property trust, which is the big one that's over here. I'm appointed by the federal court. I'm an arm of the court. I'm not BP. I'm not the plans. I'm not anybody. I'm, I'm here to do that job. I'm, I'm not a I said I'm accountable to, or I, I used to say it was too big, my wife corrected me. I first said I was accountable to myself, and then Judge Barbie said, no, you're not, you're accountable to me too, so they don't want to be way. But that trust is here. I, in addition to being the administrator, I'm the sole trustee of that trust. That trust, this is what's important, that trust uh, is an unlimited trust. We have a very specific funding mechanism that's being funded as we speak, and it's not small numbers. It's being uh, funded. We do, do that every month. I, I think the BP is obliged to fund that every month. And we provide the financial uh, input as to how much this is to be funded, depending on the claims, the cost, and et cetera. That's on this side. I'm the trustee of that trust. I'm, I'm responsible for the total administration and accountability of those dollars. I'm also accountable for the administration and the paying of the funds out of the trust. There's no limit on that trust. There's no $20 billion limit. There's no $30 billion limit. There's no $10 billion limit. You probably heard Newswide, BP estimated that that piece of the puzzle of the uh, some say six seven, some people seven, some people say seven seven. But folks, that's nothing other than an educated guess. That's a hard guess to make. You don't even know how many claims you got when you do that. Uh, I'm not guided by that. That has no effect on me. If if the sum, if the claims uh, uh, come in, they're eligible, they're entitled. I'm not I'm not here to pay 99 cents on that. I'm here to pay 100 percent of that claim. And whatever that level is, if it's 15 billion, it's 15 billion. If it's 7.9 uh, billion, that's the sum. Whatever that sum is, there's no count. There is one subset. There is in the seafood as a separate part of it. Many of you know this. There's a capping of the seafood uh, 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 claims, uh, and they have a provision about a residual can be uh, something that's uh, supplemented. That's a, that's a that's as opposed to the total uncapping of the totality of it all. Now, there's a s second trust. The second trust is what they call the medical trust. The medical trust is not me. The medical trust is to develop, you know, uh, the medical monitoring people that uh, claim they had the injuries, the claims that were uh, uh, resulted from the spill. There's a separate program, it's all posted on the website, that can administer those claims. Oh, those are claims, that, in essence, uh, the complaint of an injury, of uh, uh, rag, whatever, whatever came out of the hospital. Now, so the, the big thing then became, this goes, this, this giant uh, proposal then goes to uh, Judge Barbet. He grants preliminary approval so that everybody understands in the, in the definitions, the 
parameters of this agreement are specified. In lack of a better word, it's a settlement class. You see these all over the country. I mean, this is nothing novel about this. It defined what that settlement class is. I don't determine what the parameters of the settlement is. But if you're in it and you're eligible, it's my job to see those people get paid. So what happened? They agreed to the settlement agreement. The, the parameters, the details of that is all over here. Normally, normally, what happens, let's say that's on June 1, you get preliminary approval and you go out three or four months, you get objections and, and you get uh, uh, input regarding the settlement. Comes the date for final approval. In this case, the date for the hearing on final approval is November 8, very critical date. Normally what happens is that span of time in any class action I've ever been involved in, I've been involved in cases from California to Philadelphia to uh, Minneapolis. Claims are not even processed or completed nor considered for payment review until you get past uh, the uh, final approval date, which in this case would be November 8. This is not the animal that's created in this case. The parties agree plaintiffs and BP that with preliminary approval they can make the appointments I was authorized them to immediately activate the program start the massive input of this data and folks it is millions of pages of documents just take my word for it it's like bringing in 18 18 wheelers every day and taking this information scanning it and getting it in getting it all computerized that's what makes the system work fast start reviewing, processing these claims, and if a claim is eligible, it's processed, we send out the letter of termination, it's accepted, we pay. We've done that. This is all occurring before the November day. So let me follow up on that piece and I'll get to the specifics for you in a minute. That exact process, my, I think the commitment I made to you in your office, I said I was committed, we had to take in uh, these claims that we've got, we've got 55,316 claims as of today. You want to know in Florida of that uh, number, of that number, 18,510 come from the state of Florida. Businesses or individuals? Both. The spectrum, all, the spectrum of all type claims. We then went through determine all if we had all the information that we needed to have to evaluate this the program is very specific if you have X kind of claim the settlement agreement says if you have A, B, C, D, F, G, whatever it is for that particular claim I can process the claim I've got to have that information that's my federal court order we have sent out determination letters determination letter really is a letter that goes out and says we've gotten everything going through the all the, uh, the math, going through the formula, which we developed to uh, uh, address this consistent with the settlement agreement. We've sent out determination letters in 2,218 uh, cases. And that total <coughs> sum as of today is $95,339,434. Now, we, we did that within that time frame Congressman that I told you about. We did that, we started that process and we start, sent out determination letters in June. This program started on June 4th. I've kind of been involved in this thing, as I told you, across the country from Toyota to Avanti to Vox. Kind of, this has never happened before. This is the fastest, this is the Panama Limited uh, action program. Uh, and I said, I want to make a some payments to start the payments. It's like getting a ship to sail. Uh, you gotta, gotta see if it floats. You gotta see if you got people on staff can feed people. You gotta see if you got lifeboats and all that. We got the ship in, into the uh, into the water. It's floated. We've started and we have we actually made payments in uh, in July. Uh, we now have reached the point, and this is probably if I don't say anything else, it's probably the most important thing I can say. You're going to see from this point forward, this is what you're going to see. You're going to see the spiking up of the uh, determination letters going out in these claims because 
now I know what the I know what the system works. We have checked all the moving parts, and this is happening. You'll see a lot of that occurring the next four weeks uh, with regard to these claims. The only thing that stops me, and, and this is important, and we work in this as we, as we speak every day, is we get some claims that don't give us the information that that settlement agreement says we got to have. They specify A, B, C. Uh, I got a federal court order. I'm kind of one of those, you know, tell me what the rules of the game are, and I'll, I'll play with you as best I can. But a lot of these claims, haven't provided that information. And, you know, I'm a Cajun boss of South Louisiana, you know, people get upset when you tell them, give me something else. What's different about this program, we, we have told people in front of, not after the fact, not later, they said they keep asking for more time. We've told people in front of what we need to have. So, if there's a lot of these claims we're trying to address as quickly as we can. I've, I've got people, a separate phone bank of people calling those deficient claims, not waiting for a letter, calling them, saying, please give me this information, give me this information, we really need to kickstart the system. With all that being said and done, what you're seeing the next uh, three to four weeks is you're going to see the spike up, it's already occurring, it's occurring every day. You see substantial amount of these claims uh, exponentially uh, increasing every day as we go on. So what's the forecast? What, what, uh, what can happen. Uh, I see, I see in, in rapid order all these pieces of the puzzle that come together. We we are according to the timetable that I committed to the court, I committed to you, we're ahead of that timetable. Uh, it's moving rapidly and fast. The other issue that I think is critically important, and I, I really feel bad about this to the extent, I don't like people do not be informed. You know, if you make a bad choice, that's your choice. But I'd like to at least everybody to know what's available. 